What were the results of your study? The main findings were that uh, babies at 11 months of age, so before they say their first words, are already uh, ready to learn whatever language or languages they have been listening for that first year of their life. So at 11 months of age, we can already see brain evidence of having listened to either one or two languages from their parents. So what that means is that at the time that they're getting ready to say their first words, they're already primed to do that. And they're primed in either one language or in the case of bilingual babies, uh, two languages. And the brain can do, can and does prepare to speak in two languages at the same time. So did it make it easier for them to learn or are they just better at speaking both languages? The study looked at the differences in the brain processing of language sounds between monolinguals and bilinguals. So what we found was that those babies who listen to one language are ready to speak in one language. Their brains are primed or sensitive to the sounds in that one language that they've been listening to and not to the sounds of a language, an unfamiliar language to which they haven't been exposed. By contrast, those babies who are listening, who have been listening to two languages, their brains are primed and ready and sensitive to the sounds, the differences between sounds in two languages at the same time. And there are, there's also evidence that there, there is no delay in terms of, uh, in terms of how ready the brain is uh, to listen to differences between sounds in two different languages versus one language. Are they distinguishing that it's two different languages? The study didn't test whether they're um, distinguishing between two different languages. We just look at the brain response that tells us whether they're discriminating or distinguishing between differences in sounds in two different languages, but we're not, we know from other studies that uh, babies begin to tell the differences between two different languages if they're raised with two languages, that this, um, they, they begin to capture differences between two languages from very, very early on, much before they uh, begin to utter their first words. Tell us how you ran the study. What we did was we invited families to our lab uh, all babies in this study were 11 months old. Uh, this is the time in language development, usually right around the time that they're getting ready to say their first words. So they were 11 months of age and half of them were from monolingual families where both parents spoke English at home, were native English speakers. The other half were from bilingual families where one parent spoke Spanish and the other parent spoke English and we looked for families whose babies received about an equal amount of Spanish and English. So the families came to the lab, then we prepared them for data collection. That meant that we set the babies uh, in a high chair. We use a hat and a special digitizing pen to track the shape of the baby's head. And this is just so that during data collection, we know at all times, even if the baby moves a little bit, we know where the brain signal is coming from at any given time. So we prepare them for data collection and then we take them to the MEG, MEG machine where they again sit on a special high chair that gets lifted so that their head is within the MEG helmet and then uh, during the study they listened to language sounds. Some of them were specific to Spanish, some are specific to English, and some are common to both languages. And what we study are the brain's responses to these different language sounds. How do you tell the difference? The brain responds when, when you hear a language sound, such as da and ta. We look at specific, specific brain, specific components in the, um, in the brain response at a specific time latency after the presentation of the sound that the baby hears.
in the machine. So the family we talked to this morning, the dad's from Costa Rica, the mom is from somewhere in the U.S., um, and they started at birth talking to their yeah. children. And the dad was saying when they go back to Costa Rica, his mother says their phonetics are amazing. Mm -hmm. The conclusion would be it's because of, they were exposed to it so early. Is, is that reasonable? Typically what we see in babies who receive language input from native speakers from birth and who have interactions, who interact with native speakers of two different languages from birth, these babies can and do become native speakers of two different languages. And of course the thinking behind this is that if they receive language input in two languages, why not, right? If they're listening to two languages, if they have opportunities to interact in two different languages, um, their brain and also their phonetics, uh, their uh, vocal apparatus develops to, to handle two languages at the same time and, um, and they, they become, they can become native speakers in two languages. How can parents use this information? A couple of different things come to mind. In the U.S., there are already many families where parents are, in fact, native speakers of languages other than English, and there is still some fear or some uncertainty sometimes whether or not parents, these parents should be speaking their native, their native language at home or whether we should just interact with them in English. Uh, our findings definitely support the view that the, the infant brain is capable of learning two languages at the same time. And we encourage all parents to speak uh, at home with their baby in the language in which they feel most comfortable and natural because it's these natural social interactions that are best for, um, for language learning and lead to best outcomes. The other implication is that we truly believe that every baby should have an ability, should have an opportunity to, to learn two languages during this critical time window in brain development when the brain is primed for learning. So we really believe that if we give babies an opportunity to experience a second language during infancy and early childhood, they will be able and should be able to develop native-like fluency. So, of course, this, um, this leads to the thinking about creating bilingual programs for, uh, for early, for, to give babies opportunities to experience a second language in a preschool environment, in an environment of nursery schools and um, early education settings um, in the United States and also worldwide, which is also, also something we have been working, we have been working on. So they do exist, don't they? Because mm -hmm. this family sends their kids to school and there are immersion neighborhood schools. Well, it depends, right? We know that um, the period in development when our brains are most primed for language learning is early infancy, so zero to five. And there are the opportunities for exposure to a foreign language for ages zero to five are fairly limited. And if they do exist, they tend to be, uh, one, very expensive and not affordable to everybody, and two, um, they're not always high quality. So one thing that's really important to know that is also uh, shown by the research in our lab is that yes, babies are, babies are primed for language learning and they're great language learners, but what they're hearing really, really matters. So it's not the case that any kind of language and any amount of language exposure will work. They need to hear lots of language and they need to hear high quality language and they need to be, they need to have opportunities to interact and actively engage in that language that they're trying to, that they're trying to learn. So when you put all of this together, what that means is that 
opportunities for second language learning have to be of the right kind, not any kind of exposure to a foreign language will work. The timing is important, but the quality is probably even more important. You studied English and Spanish, but for the babies, just the two parallel, just two different languages. When you design studies uh, such as magnetoencephalography, these are very well controlled experiments where we take specific language contrasts and study the difference between da and ta in this case, but of course the implications go um, to other languages as well. Where will you go now with the study? We have been, since the publication of this study, we have moved to, uh, to more applied mm -hmm. studies. So we have um, designed a, um, we have designed a research-based method and curriculum for teaching babies a second language within um, early education centers and we have tested that curriculum in early infant education centers in Madrid, Spain. And so um, we are trying very much to expand and to, um, to apply what we learn from brain science to formal and informal learning contexts in the United States and worldwide.